Hello YouTube, this is Morgan, Airspeed Prime here with my next Borso anime review. This one's going to be for episode 83, which is called Onoki's Justice. So we continue on with this arc. Uh, this this episode was kind of an interesting one because obviously we got the big cliffhanger from last the end of last week that Onoki's in on the plan and it was a little bit of a shock. Um, and here is the explanation. And I think sort of to be expected, it's not as like full-on evil as I suppose maybe it, you could have been uh, led to believe uh, this episode definitely presents it as like good intentioned but like he can't see that this is not the way to go about this and that the reveal here is that after an attack that I think the only victims were a bunch of younger uh, shinobi in the um, uh, village hidden in the stone Onoki came up with this plan to make these artificial kind of soldiers basically to fight on the front line so they don't have to use any younger shinobi to protect the youth so uh, that's obviously very good intention and he's desperately trying to like in his last months years um, make this happen so nothing bad will happen again. I assume they probably still have to bring in the whole thing about what happened to his grandson in and reveal that to be like the real core of this in that are they trying to say that during this attack that was when Anoki's grandson was killed and that's where this all came from because this episode took the whole kind of relation between some of the characters in a kind of weird direction in that Ku I think based on the preview for the next episode looks set to be revealed to not actually be like Onoki's like a biological son and the whole father thing is more of the creator of the Akuta type thing that uh, Ku realistically is a Sekie type character maybe the first of them the most kind of complete type character like that and um, rather than being like a direct biological son of Anoki. That kind of helps to, I think, explain a lot of things a little bit, but I think Kurtsuchi did have a bit of a reaction to seeing him. Maybe that was because she immediately recognized that it was something related to this experiment, but um, we'll see exactly where they go with that. Um, I think that's an interesting reveal, um, and because of what they did with Anoki here, it definitely leads you to believe that Ku is the one who's really behind a lot of um, the truly bad and evil aspects of this plan in terms of like Konoha Shinobi being killed and all of this um, and the um, the issues between the stone and the leaf beginning to, to actually kind of fracture a little bit here. I don't think Onoki necessarily wanted a lot of that and I think Ku is kind of the one pushing it and you can sort of see that that by based on the flashback, Onoki didn't have complete control over the prototypes. And here, he doesn't have complete control over Ku. And again, is that because Ku is an actual person, so he doesn't have to listen to him? But if he is a creation, he's also beginning to disobey Onoki here. Um, and so, yeah, the, the, the bit of action that kind of kicked off to, I suppose, free everyone up from this kind of hostage situation, I actually really liked in that Borto jumps into action... Ku takes him on, um, Chocho is the next one to actually jump into action, uh, Akatsuchi jumps in with the cool kind of uh, golem, earth golem jutsu, Ku is revealed to be able to do particle style, which to me is an interesting one in that like, if they're really doing, going in this artificial road with Ku, it's, it's cr pretty crazy that you can pass that ability on because obviously particle style is i believe the only like uh three three element kind of release jutsu that we really know about in terms of a keke tota uh, i don't think we've had any other triple one confirmed to us before we only know about the keke genkai as the doubles and um, so it's a super powerful ability in that it, it one shots akatsuchi's golem and um, and Ku seems to be able to use it without the sort of backlash that Onoki, being much older, seemed to have. So that's something I'm, I'm really wondering about too, in just with regards to like, we know like these sort of crazy abilities can be passed on because like a huge part of like original Naruto was um, like the, the, 
like the cells of the first Hokage being used in, in like a bunch of different characters to give them like increased healing and stuff like that. Um, so it's not like this crazy thing where like just this ability could be passed on, but it is a pretty notable thing if like if potentially loads of characters can just be given particle style, uh, given how rare it is otherwise. Um, but I think that the, the, that's the, I think, main thing that this episode accomplished is Onoki is good intentioned in all of this and ultimately doesn't want anyone to get hurt because his whole perspective here is to protect the, the younger people. So, of course, he doesn't want to kill um, young Shinobi from the Leaf Village to make this happen, but he still, it, it's a plan that he seems invested in, so... I'm still very interested to see what exact direction they go with it. I think they will ultimately reveal that the whole grandson thing is the kind of spark behind this. This is why he's so intent on it and why he went behind Kurtsuchi's back and would do all of this. I think that's the reveal that sort of has to come out in all of this. Um, on the other plot, we have um, Sekie and Mitsuki uh, walking around. We get to see Sekie's room and all the drawings that he's doing. The fact that he's sort of learning. He wants to be more human. The idea is brought up by Mitsuki to Sekie that because Sekie is an artificial person and the whole plan is to protect the youth uh, of the village, that there could come a point where Sekie is used in place of one of the youth to kind of protect them and that they are just kind of soldiers that they're willing to send off to die and they're not really being treated as kind of beings with their own will. Um, so it's sort of putting a doubt in just the mind of Sekie there. I don't know how much they're going to commit to it, but it was it was something of note. Um he kind of notes that like if you you know you you become stronger if you have someone to protect and now he has another friend so they continue with the whole idea that Mitsuki uh, Sekie is this kind of notable friendship here that's kind of happening. Uh, we then get the doctor here of the Stone Village um, beginning to perform a scan on Mitsuki and we find out that it seems like he can't get any data from Mitsuki because there's a curse mark there. Now. They didn't specify the details around like what exactly the curse mark is in that like is this blocking any data from coming out? Is this something that stops them from being able to like sense what's going on in Mitsuki's body? Is it some sort of a like self-destruct thing or is it just that they sensed a curse mark that is in Mitsuki? So that still has to be revealed um, in that they seem to be very much going down the road of like okay Mitsuki is there because they need to perfect the Akuta and Mitsuki is more or less a perf perfect uh, synthetic being. Um, so that's that, that's definitely an interesting one in that lo it looks like next week they're potentially going to do re reveal the details about what happened here and what went wrong. Um, the other, I suppose the last bit of the episode is we get uh, Sh Shigadai gets captured and he is placed in a cell next to Kuratsuchi. And they seem to be going ahead with that. They're going to do an escape plan. Kurtsuchi seems to note the fact that, oh, you're Sukumaru's son. And she seems to note that, okay, his skills plus mine, we can get out now. And Shikadai's skills are going to be very important in what happens. So I'm guessing it's something along the lines of, like, if someone comes in, he can perform the shadow possession on them to get them to open the door or something like that, and they can escape that way. That's a very simplistic view of it, but, you know, it, there's a lot of things they can do now that they have um, someone with a more kind of sneaky ability, whereas Kurtsuchi's abilities are more direct. Um, when she gets out, she's going to be super powerful, of course, but um, doesn't quite have the skill set to, like, find a way to get out just yet um but i, I like the talk here it's it's kurt so she kind of uh, she realizes she sort of made the mistake of being a little bit dismissive with naruto early on earlier on and what was happening and potentially being dismissive of her grandfather before and now she's going to make up for both of them make sure that she keeps the promise to naruto and all the kids get back to the village and that they kind of make up for this and it doesn't cause an international incident. 
Uh, there is a slight other scene where they Shik Shikadai and Naruto they call up uh, the Stone Village, but just get a <clears throat> a response from someone being controlled, and they note that Konohamaru is on his way there. We'll wait to see what he says. So <clears throat> it seems like there's still a long way to go in this arc. From the intro, it seems like we have to wait for like Sand Genin to get involved, and. Um, it's, there's a lot of fights that obviously are still going to have to take place um, and, and a lot of stuff to be set up. But I think we're in an interesting position here in that like Onoki is so ill at this point that he's not really a threat. And I thought that scene that they did there was actually really well done. That it was this pillar in the middle of the fight that was going to fall on Onoki. And he just did not have the ability to react to it falling. Ku was in the middle of a fight with someone else. He couldn't protect him. It was left to Borto to be the one to save Onoki. So even though Onoki's sort of behind this in a, in a way, Borto still saved him. And now they are completely open to have just a proper conversation about what's going on here. Um, so I, I'm, I'm pretty much going to end it there uh, with the idea that I think the the pacing is still a little slow. But I thought this episode was overall a kind of improvement over like some of the recent ones. And this arc has definitely been a little up and down. Uh, they're they're trying to turn this into like uh, I suppose the first like Borto anime unique arc that is like truly like epic. And it's working in some ways. It's not working in others. And I think just a large part of that would just be the pacing of just they need to commit to just here's where we're going and and go that far right now it just feels like a, a little a, a bit too little is happening in each episode but there's still good stuff in each episode um so yep yeah, I, I i think the arc the general idea of the arc is very well done it's still we're still waiting for borto to obviously meet mitsuki again and see how they resolve that but there's all this other stuff that's happening since the stone kind of plot came into play. There's a there's a plot interest here as well as just that basic character one. So yeah, that's my thoughts on the episode. In the comments, let me know what your thoughts were on this episode. But uh, yeah, that's been the review. Thanks for watching and bye.